previously on Historical Geocaching. My best friend and I are visiting the Museum of the Cherokee Indian in Cherokee, North Carolina. Most recently, we've surveyed exhibits detailing life of prehistoric Indians in the Paleo, Archaic, Woodland, and Mississippian periods. This replica of the Proclamation of 1763 was issued by King George III of England. To the relief of the Cherokees, the document promised that there would be no more white settlements in the Appalachian Mountains and all points west. Unfortunately, there was no way to enforce this law. It all started in Charlestown when Austin Naco saw a portrait of King George III and remarked, Long have I wished to see the king. A short time later, Austin Naco, Stalking Turkey, and the Pigeon went to England, accompanied by Lieutenant Henry Timberlake. individual in 5,000 years of recorded history known to have derived a complete writing system without first being literate in some language. He is Sequoia. Forsaken by his white father, he was raised by his mother and despite an infirm leg, he helped out on his farm, becoming a silversmith and showed a fine talent for drawing. He spoke no English and knew nothing of writing, which the Cherokees called talking leaves except that it seemed important to be able to capture the words and thoughts of his people. Friends thought he would be wasting his time, but undaunted, Sequoia began his efforts in 1809. Later, around 1821, he completed his first syllabary, a writing system or kind of alphabet in which each character stands for a syllable. It was the perfect system for the Cherokee language in which almost all syllables begin with a consonant sound and end with a vowel. The people easily learned to use the syllabary and it allowed Cherokees to communicate and keep records in their own language and assisted them in preserving their culture. Called 
by some the Pocahontas of the West, Nancy Ward is one of the most famous Cherokee women in history. She was a beloved woman, an honor won in battle, even though she became an advocate for peace. Nancy was the niece of Atak Kula Kula, the renowned Cherokee narrator or and cousin of the great Cherokee warrior Dragon Canoe. Unlike her cousin, she followed in her uncle's footsteps, counseling the path of peace. Dragon Canoe was a well-known Cherokee warrior. As a young boy, he hid in a canoe in order to go with a war party. When he was discovered, his father, Atakula Kula, told him that he, if he carried the canoe, he could go. And that is how Dragon Canoe got his name. Later, he would be called other names like the Savage Napoleon and the Dragon. According to the legend of the Burning Belt, a sacred belt was laid over a crossbeam in Nancy Ward's home, and a prophecy told that the problems of the Cherokee stemmed from their having left the traditional path. If they obeyed tradition, they would be alright as long as the belt survived. The belt then burst into flames, but the structure remained, as if the fire had burned around the strings which held the beads together. The event was interpreted as the belt being indestructible, like the fire people. Cherokees themselves. Chamber of Dissenting Voices this statue represents three factions of the Cherokees and different paths they took because of removal. The Oconolufti Citizen Indians formed the core of the present-day Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians. They had applied to become U.S. citizens, taking advantage of a treaty clause which allowed them to separate from the Cherokee Nation and occupy private reservations on ceded land. The treaty party was led by Major Ridge, his son John Ridge, and his nephew Elias Bodenot. Originally opposed to removal, they came to believe that it was the best policy and in December 1835 they signed the Treaty of New Echota, which ceded their eastern homeland for $5 million in western land. Looked upon as traitors by the majority of the Cherokee Nation, the Treaty Party leaders, including the Ridges and Budanon, were later executed for selling their birthright. John Ross and the Cherokee Nation the majority of the Cherokees wanted to stay in their homeland and fought with every legal means available. Some lobbied in Washington, others fought legal battles such as Worcester versus Georgia. But in the end, all of their efforts failed as they were forcibly removed to Indian Territory. Their tragic journey west came to be known as the Trail of Tears. <laughs>